What's going on everybody, C4 here and welcome to episode 1, the official episode of the San Antonio Marshalls franchise here on Madden 19. On Friday we had the expansion draft, today we're going to feature the 2003 NFL draft and the entirety summary of the preseason to set up week number 1. So I hope you guys are ready to jump into the 2003 draft where we currently hold the first overall pick. Welcome to the 2003 National Football League Draft. Oh boy, with the number one overall pick, we can go so many different ways here for the Marshalls. I mean, we look at quarterback here, we got Carson Palmer, we're going to put him on the shortlist. We're going to build our shortlist, we're going to walk you through the shortlist. Byron Leftwich out of Marshall has a really, really strong arm. Same with Kyle Bowler. You got Rex Grossman from Florida, not necessarily what we're looking for here. Seneca Wallace brings some dual threat ability. Um... But ultimately, there's not, a, there's not a whole lot there. There was some buzz about undrafted free agent Tony Romo here from Eastern Illinois having a really nice pro day. But, uh, I mean, that's someone we can start to focus on in the later rounds. At the running back spot, I mean, we do have He Hate Me. We feel pretty confident with He Hate Me. Uh, but definitely the top two backs here in this year's draft class are very promising in Willis McGahee and Larry Johnson. Uh, looking for later round backs, there's not a whole lot here in this draft class in terms of late round value. So I think we're probably going to be sticking with He Hate Me for our running back for the foreseeable future. At wide receiver, we have Charles Rogers, who's coming as a very hype prospect out of Michigan State. So we'll tab him up. Andre Johnson might be the better of the two, though. So we're definitely going to keep an eye on him as, you know, again... He calls back to we lost out on Jerry Rice. We gambled that we could get Jerry Rice, ultimately lost out on him. So getting an exciting playmaker like Andre Johnson or Charles Rogers would go a long way with the fan base. Going from that into the second round, Anquan Bolden is a very nice prospect. You have Nate Burleson, White Lightning, Kevin Curtis. Uh, also brings some nice playmaking ability, speed on the outside, which is kind of how we've built our roster. Uh, tight end, Dallas Clark. A lot of reports have him as one of the most well-rounded tight ends. Uh, that college has been produced in quite some time. Iowa is kind of a tight end factory, but you need to look. I mean, you also have Jason Witten here out of Tennessee. He's getting a lot of buzz in the third round. But the strength of our team, probably our best playmaker right now, is at that tight end position, so I'm not overly worried. Same thing kind of goes with the outside. The tackles here, our left tackle and right tackle, are both very solid for the time being. So we're not going to use a big-time investment on one of those picks, picks, uh, picks. But into the interior, I mean, we definitely could look at beefing that up. So Steinbeck. Manuai uh, could definitely make a lot of sense at center. Um, I mean, not a strong class for center. Dan Coppin from Boston College uh, probably has the most acumen right now. Uh, the other guard spot, let's see what we got here. We got Taylor Whitley. Yeah, David Deal from Illinois. He might be all right. A little bit of a flyer pick, but again, guards are not really the strength. Offensive line in general is not really the strength of this year's draft class. Taking a turn to the defensive side. At defensive end, uh, we got a couple height picks here. Tyler Brayton out of Colorado. But our, our scouts didn't really come back with a overly positive report uh, from him. Uh, but we have got strong reports here from Calvin Pace out of Wake Forest. Smaller school. Same with OCU Manura. Two guys that have dominated a lower level of competition uh, in the college game that thinks our scouts anyway. Same with Robert Mathis here. Can definitely make the transition to help out our squad right away. Uh, D tackles in the interior. We're actually pretty all right there, but Kevin Williams from Oklahoma State has got a lot of A++ grades, especially when it comes to stuffing the run. So he'll be a target we look for if he just so happens to slip out of the first round and is available in the early uh, stages of the second round where we'll have our very high pick, obviously. Actually, I think we have two picks too. We also have the Seattle Seahawks second round pick, which is very nice. Look at the linebacking core. We have Terrell Suggs, who has like set the sack record, I believe, in NCAA last year. Uh, out of Arizona State, so that is a pick that we definitely need to weigh a little bit. It's it's ultimately going to come down to, do we want, in reality, probably Terrell Suggs or Andre Johnson uh, at this point. Not a lot of death behind T. Sizzle. I believe that's his nickname uh, at outside linebacker, so we, we also kind of need to weigh that just a little bit. Lance Briggs out of Arizona, really good cover linebacker. Uh, I've heard that the Chicago Bears are very high on drafting him, so we might need to overdraft him if he just so happens to be in play for our roster. Not much help here in the interior, but we do have Jamie Sharper, who kind of like our tight end is the strength of our defense. Like that's the one position I think we could kind of be all right about. We have Terrence Newman is currently the top available cornerback out of Kansas State. A lot of scouts think that his athletic ability will be able to play for decades in the National Football League, kind of along the lines of Daryl Green from the Washington Redskins. So that is definitely something that you want to look at. Marcus Trufant's also a nice option at cornerback. You have Nanby Asimov, Charles Tillman. I think his nickname was Peanut. That's kind of got a little bit of a giggle around the draft room, but he is a very nice player. Um, 
supposedly is excellent at forcing fumbles, which is kind of unnatural for a cornerback. Usually corners, you think they're just more so locked down. Asante Samuel at a UCF. Ike Taylor from Louisiana College, the partner in crime to Peanut Tillman. Uh, also got some very nice – he was one of those guys. You know, you looked at Peanut Tillman, you looked at his tape, and Ike Taylor would stand out and make a couple plays that became kind of interesting. Uh, our safety tandem is very strong, so unless there's really, really good value, we're not going to probably invest a pick at the safety position, even though Troy Palomalo is getting a lot of hype. Uh, he has a couple big-time hits at USC. Also kind of has a reputation of being a dirty player. There's a couple questionable hits that showed up on the scouting report out of USC. That is definitely something you want to watch. I mean, you know, Bronson Shackelford kind of likes the, the wow big playability of Troy Polamalu. But, uh, you know, you definitely need to be wary of that. And maybe at this point in time, because he has that negative reputation, we can hope he could be one of those guys that slips out of the first round. Maybe because of the question marks. And if he's still there at pick one in the second round, we'll be all over that. So kind of setting up our short list here of prospects. I think it's pretty clear at this point that the one player that stands out to us in terms of marketability, because right now we're kind of lacking that big marketable star is going to be Andre Johnson, the wide receiver out of Miami. Six foot three, 227 pounds, running 4'4", top in the vertical, top three in three cones, second in bench press. He is just a complete game wrecker outside at wide receiver. So that is who we're going to select with the first pick in the 2003 NFL Draft, Andre Johnson from Miami. 81 star dev wide receiver. You wanted a freak of nature. We got one. 92, three, 92 speed. 93 acceleration, 82 catching, uh, great intermediate, great short route running, and he is going to be an absolute all-star for this team. In the second round, we absolutely have to get better in the interior of our offensive line, so we got we to gotta reach at this point. There's still some very nice prospects available here. O.C. Munier, you have Namdi Asimov slipping out of, the, out of the first round, still available in the second, but we have to just reach on the for sure thing right now available on the offensive line. And our scouts gave us a thumbs up that Vince Manawai will be that option. Putting 32 reps on the bench press. Uh, really good in pass protection for Hawaii. They're running a little bit of an air raid offense. So it's exactly what we're probably going to have to rely more upon. And we're going to select him. And that is an absolute home run pick for our front office. Projected to go in the third round. People just scratching their heads about this selection. Why are they reaching with, you know, someone like Nami Asuma out of Cal, Cal Pac-12 All-Star? And we, we get the offensive lineman from the gimmicky air raid offense in Hawaii. And he emerges as a 76 quick dev guard. Vince Manawai, 88 strength. Uh, and there we go, man. That is a big get for offensive line. He is a day one starter. And with our second second round pick, uh, it comes point time. We got to look at the address. And OCU Manura, pretty much a consensus second round pick here. Uh, we need to get better. We need to affect the pass right away with great three crone, great 20 yard shuttle. Uh, top five and 40 plus he is 21 so he's a very young player a lot of football ahead of him a lot of time to develop him into the player that we want him to be so you know even though he's a small school player out of troy we're not too worried and we're gonna make full confidence like the man i picked that we're making the right decision here and we're gonna select oc humanura defensive end from troy and he comes in as a 78 star dev player 84 finesse move 80 speed 84 acceleration uh, got good strength, got good athletic traits. Definitely needs a work of progress in his power moves and his tackling and his block chain to become a complete defensive end. But we're very excited that we're going to be able to tap that full potential on the defensive side of the ball. In the third round, another slight reach, but a playmaker whose highlight reel was too good for us to pass up. A lot of people has, you know, he's too aggressive. He bites too much. But I see pure ball playmaking ability here in a Sante Samuel out of UCF. And he is a 76 star dev corner, 90 speed, 93 acceleration, 84 man, 83 zone, best corner on the board, and a home run pick here for the Marshalls. So as the board's kind of shaken up here in the fourth round, an interesting option has slipped. Kyle Bowler out of Cal had a lot of hype as a first round QB is still here in the fourth. And while, you know, I, I do like Randall Cunningham, while I do like the reports, saying that next year's draft class may be stronger for a quarterback. I think getting a first-round QB in the fourth, it's worth the gamble. Just to add that depth, maybe Kyle Bowler can emerge to be that next great quarterback uh, from the Pac-12, from SoCal. 
So I, I think that's just too much value to pass up from the fact that I, 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 you know, I'm not a huge fan of his game, but so many people can't be wrong. A fourth round pick is not that bad of an investment in case he does tap into his potential. So we're going to select Kyle Bowler here in the fourth round. 74 quick dev comes in with 93 throw power, 84 medium accuracy, 83 short. That's not that bad, man. Awareness is kind of low. Good athlete too. 80 speed, 83 acceleration. Might be able to learn a thing or two behind Randall Cunningham. Now, there's no plans. I'm not going to put any label that he's going to be our franchise quarterback. He's a fourth-round pick. He could you know, hit his ceiling of being a backup, but uh, it's nice stability to have uh, at least a somewhat promising prospect at that quarterback position, given the fact that Randall Cunningham is 40 years old. Okay, so moving to the fifth round, we're looking. We really do need a defensive end and a guard. Robert Mathis has got a lot of reviews from our scouting department. Obviously, he balled out at the combine, but I'm, I, I don't know. Alabama A&M. You know, there's a reputation that's where players with with attitude issues tend to go uh, once they have to go like you know transfer out of the first division of college. So we're actually gonna go with this guy from a small school. I'd rather go from a guy with a small school that's a diamond in a rough versus someone that's gone to a school that has not the best reputation. So we're actually gonna make the decision to go with Reggie Wells here, guard from Clarion in uh, in the pick here. And 73 quick. That's not bad. That's adding more depth to the offensive line. He has really nice stats, man. If you can get that awareness up. He could, be a, he could be a potential long-term starter for us here on the OL. In the sixth round, we're pretty much in a point to just go best player available. But I'm liking the report here on Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker from Georgia. Uh, very strong, put out the most reps in the bench press. The skills, the scout report came back pretty good. So let's select him. He is a 72 quick, nice depth player. We'll be able to contribute on special teams right away. For the final pick of the seventh round, we pretty much just went for the best athlete available, and that is Chris Dealman, guard from Indiana, with the third best 40, third best vert, and the bench press, which is very, very important for us when we're looking at scouting offensive linemen. So we're going to select Chris Dealman, another offensive lineman here from Indiana. With that size, he could potentially play at offensive tackle, and look at that, 75 star dev guard. Projected to be an undrafted free agent. We're getting him in the seventh round. That is a home run for the Marshalls. So a draft recap for those of you that just didn't miss home run after home run. We selected Andre Johnson out of the U with the first overall pick. In the second round, we got Vince Manuai. Somewhat questionable with some of the bigger names there, but we're continuing to build up the offensive line. OCU Manure at pick three. In the second round, defensive end out of Troy. We got Asante Samuel, a reach on a lot of people's boards. He was you know, pretty much a consensus fourth-round pick. We got him in the third. Our scouting department did a great job, as he will probably have an opportunity to be our starting nickel this year. Kyle Bowler in the fourth round. He was a projected first-round QB. Just just you know, a guy, a flyer for us at this given point. We're not going to consider him that first-round gray. We're not going to consider him a franchise quarter. Right now, he is the backup to Randall Cunningham, and he's got to prove otherwise if he wants a better flash at your title. Uh, we got Reggie Wells here in the fifth round. Lots of criticism, you know, with a guy, talented small school player in uh, Robert Mathis still available. We decided, you know, screw up. We'll go Reggie Wells and uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. He's 73. We got a middle linebacker here, Tony Gilbert. He is a 72. And then maybe the best pick of the entire draft, Chris Dielman, protected UDFA. Even though he had an insane combine, he was regarded as a raw prospect when it came to his technical game. 75 star dev. Projected to be UDFA, that is huge. That is an exceptional draft for Bronson, Shackelford, and company. With so many people concerned that this flamboyant wannabe rapper, now turned NFL owner, just going to make a mockery of the league. This is an exceptional first draft for him and his staff. And just to get a quick recap here of the first round and where some other players have landed, noteworthy players that we were very interested in during the draft process. Terrell Suggs. Went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Terrence Newman to the Chicago Bears. Carson Palmer is the new quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Troy Palomalo went to the Detroit Lions. Um, we got Calvin Pace going to the Buffalo Bills. Kevin Williams to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Larry Johnson, Carolina Panthers. Dallas Clark to the Washington Redskins. Very interesting signing there. Um, Charles Tillman. Peanut Tillman going to the Indianapolis Colts. We'll go to the second round, too, just to see. Just to see, Willis McGahee to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Namdi Asimov to the Detroit Lions. Lions have an exceptional draft, bringing in both Namdi Asimov and Troy Polamalu. Anquan Bolden staying in Florida, going to the Miami Dolphins. Jason Witten, the new tight end of the Carolina Panthers. Lance Briggs going to the Kansas City Chiefs. 
And uh, that will pretty much round that up. That's very interesting new homes. But I still would like to think that my draft, our draft, for the San Antonio Marshals gets the number one grade. A++ grade in my biased opinion. So the roster has been built. We are now an 80 overall team, 79 offense, 85 defense in the truest form. We are still an expansion roster. We're looking at a couple brand new additions. We got Manuai and Dealman, the two guards we selected in the draft, will start. Andre Johnson, the number one overall pick in the 03 draft, will clearly be our starting wide receiver on the outside. We'll actually make Kyle Bowler here the backup to Mr. Randall Cunningham. On the defensive side, we got O.C. Umanura will be starting. We got Sam Adams, who was our big get in free agency. He will be starting at defensive tackle. Uh, we got Jamie Sharper here leading the back of the defense. Seahorn. Uh, Sante Samuel will be our starting nickel. As uh, We got all of our ducks in a row here as we enter the preseason. We have games against the Falcons, Saints, Patriots, and Bears. What we are going to do is pretty much what we do every preseason. We're going to sim until week three. Week three is where we're going to feature a lot of our starters. And we'll wrap up this episode as we get ready for week one on the road in ATL. All right, today in the preseason, it's the preseason. No one plays defense in the preseason. So we're just going to try to show off our offense. All of our starters out there, Randall Cunningham lining up in the shotgun on the first play in the home game history of the Marshals. He completes it with tight end Billy Miller for a gain of seven. Great start to the drive. And we got a punt it. Oh, let's go, Billy Miller. Billy Miller franchise tight end right there with the hurdle in the preseason. Mike Vrabel brings him down with the tackle. All right, we are now here in the red zone. First and goal, down three to the New England Patriots. We got Billy Miller, who's on absolute fire. We're actually going to try to fit this one into him here, which we do. The connection between Cunningham and Miller looks to be a insanely productive one here in the early stages of the preseason. Will it continue throughout the regular season? It's another story. All right, we got a third and eight here with eight seconds left on the clock. A one-point lead as we want to try to get one more playoff to potentially get a touchdown before halftime, not settle for a field goal. It's probably the last going to be the last play here for our starters. We got plenty of time. Oh, look at that timing. Fit that in. Oh, he goes for the... Ah, he went for the one-hander, Brandon Stokely. Credit where credit's due, but uh, not a smart play. We should have just got that play over quicker and kicked the field goal. But still, a one-point halftime lead. For the Marshals against the Patriots in week three of the preseason. Let's go, he hate me. Oh, let's go, he hate me. Oh, let's. Oh, there's a penalty flag. Oh, that's probably going to cost us. God damn it. Why does it always cost us when things go right? You know, it can't ever be like a one yard loss. Oh, let's bring it back for a holding call. Of course, you definitely know he hate me. He's letting the refs here right now. Can't believe it. Holding on the offense. The Zebras. Just take six off the board here for the Marshals. There we go. That's 15. That's okay. Kyle Bowler might be earning himself some some clout here to move up the depth chart. That was a perfect pass. All right, first goal on the eight after that big pass and face mask call. So we got Kyle Bowler here moving out of the pocket and he fires it in. To the back of the end zone, and it is caught! 87, I don't know who you are. You're trying to make a spot here on the roster. Dawson with a nice little tutty. But I'm loving the way Kyle Bowler showed that poise. You don't see that in most rookies. But then again, he was a first-round caliber quarterback. That slipped to us to the fourth round. All right, after defense got us back into it, we're just... We can win this, maybe. All right, 58 seconds left. Kyle Bowler, first play. Let's get a big one. Let's get a big one here. Get locked up. Lead your wide receiver, which he does, and he makes the connection with 84, and he brings it all the way up to the 15-yard line. The Marshals are rolling. First and 10. It's a clean-ish pocket. Is B wide open. Oh, that is. Oh, you've got to make that pass. We'll throw that up to a rookie jitters or something. But that was that was great protection from the offensive line. Wide receiver finally got separation in the end zone. You got to connect with that one. All right. Let's go again here. Second and 10 from the 15 yard line. Get a relatively clean pocket. Wide gets open in the end zone. 
He breaks the- Oh, come on! He broke the plane! How did he not- How do you view that as not breaking the plane? Alright, there's no other way that we could try and win this game without a C4 special opportunity. Kyle Buller through his shoulder. Got us here, but now let's run it in. Let's run it in, Mr. Wells. It gets definitely not blocked. Oh, he breaks the tackle! He will not be denied! As the touchdown counts with 19 seconds left on the clock. And in typical big baller fashion, we're going the play. How do I how do I get in here? Give me this. Give me this. No more lots of preseason. Let's let the defense have fun and not really try. No, no. We're trying to win this. We're going for two. We're gonna see they don't first big moment here for Kyle Bull. Let's get to go into his scouting report. When the game is on the line, we're not gonna hand it off. Can he make the throw to get us a lead? Preseason or not? We're going to have the wide receiver here go in motion across the center of the field. He gets a pretty clean pocket. B was wide open. I don't know what that wide receiver was doing. What was that wide receiver doing? Why did he just get bumped off his route and was like in our backfield? Oh. Well, I guess when you're playing with third and four stringers, that's a bound to happen. Hey, wasn't a bad preseason performance. I mean, it was It was intense. We saw a lot of fight. We saw a lot of positives. Saw some of the negatives that come with playing with depth players. But, I mean, we have a legitimate question now. Who's going to be our QB? I mean, Cunningham wasn't bad. Both t quarterbacks finished with a touchdown and an interception each. But, I don't know, maybe it just felt a little bit different with Kyle Bowler. But, I mean, that's a question for you guys. Who do you think we should go with? This? I, I, I firmly believe it's, it's far too early to start throwing a QB controversy into the mix. The veteran Randall Cunningham did not do bad enough to lose his job nor did Kyle Bowler do good enough I think to steal that job away uh, look at the rest of the stats here Rod Smart averaging almost seven yards a tote that is very promising going forward Billy Miller looked nice McKnight looked nice we had only one catch from Andre Johnson maybe we would want to see a little bit more around him but that's still got involved he got involved and that's that's good enough for me I suppose defensively Jamie Sharper nine tackles a TFL and sack on the day. Bunch of sacks across the board. I like seeing that, especially OCU Manura showing up there in the stat sheet. But unfortunately, a preseason defeat. Luckily, they don't count, and we saw a lot of promising plays and players from the Marshals. And from that, now we look ahead to the beginning of the regular season and this week one game against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, I've already told you guys how this video and series is going to be presented is four weeks at a time. So because we have so many seasons and, and we want to just get through the history of this team as efficient as possible, uh, that's how everything is going to be chopped up. I'm thinking we're probably going to play and feature highlights from one of the four games. The rest will be showcased in like a play the moment style. Uh, and I also feel like that'll give us a little bit more of a realistic experience when it comes to a win-loss. Because you know what? I get my hands on this team. You saw what kind of damage I did with Kyle Bowler and the third stringers. You know, you give me the full strength team, probably got to go like, you know, 10, 12 wins every single year. But throwing the sim in, throwing the sim cheese in, that helps kind of keep things as realistic. And that kind of seems pretty hypocritical to bring it in uh, to say that the Madden sim and Madden 19 is realistic. But it should keep our win-loss record somewhat realistic as we try to attempt to build this team into a perennial winner. I think, I think that four-week presentation style is going to work best, but always still looking to refine it, and we'll look and read your guys' comments and suggestions in the comment section below. But I hope you guys did enjoy the debut episode here of the San Antonio Marshals, the new franchise that will lead us into the Madden 20 season. There's lots of football to be played, lots of history to relive, and I hope you guys are going to stick along for the ride. So thank you guys for watching. As always, if your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed, and until next time, it's C4, same peace, out.